Today I want to discuss the topic of from a distance, from a distance. Lord, be with us as we hear your word, as we hear your message, as we contemplate what it means to be healed, what it means to be cured, and what it means to come to you in praise and adoration. Lord, I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditations of our collective hearts will be acceptable in your sight at all times. Amen. From a distance, midway through the Gospel of Luke, Jesus decides that he has to go to Jerusalem. God is calling him to Jerusalem. So from a distance, he and the disciples are on their way. And as they go, Jesus meets with people and meets with crowds. He teaches and he heals all while he's on the way from a distance to Jerusalem. And it is from a distance, somewhere between Galilee and Samaria, that Jesus enters a village, a village where ten lepers approach him, begging for mercy, begging for healing. Jesus sees them and tells them to go show themselves to the local priests. They hear Jesus and follow his instructions, and from a distance, somewhere between Jesus and the priests, they notice that they've been cured. Once they notice this, one of them, the Samaritan, which seems to incline that the other nine were of Jewish faith, one of them turns back to Jesus, falls at his feet, and thanks him, gives praise to him. Jesus notices that it is not only one of the ten Jesus noticed that it is only one of the ten, and tells him to get up. Your faith has made you well. Get up. Your faith has made you well. Now, it's this statement of Jesus's that raises some questions for me. First question is, why does Jesus tell this man that he's been cured, that his faith has made him well, even after he's been cured? And does that mean that the other nine have had their healings revoked? Are they back to being suffering from leprosy? And weren't the other nine obeying Jesus by getting up and going to the priests like Jesus told them to do? I was thinking about these questions, especially why Jesus said your faith has made you well. And I started to remember a book that I've recently read by a man named Dr. Gaber Mate, who is a, a, a clinician and an author now. And he wrote a book recently called The Myth of Normal. And the core of this book is that, as he writes, that health and illness are not random states in a particular body or body part. They are, in fact, an expression of an entire life lived, one that cannot, in turn, be understood in isolation. It is influenced by, or better yet, arises from a web of circumstances, a web of relationships, events, and experiences. So basically in the book, Mate mainly focuses on how individual, communal, and societal trauma is at the core of so much of our health issues today. And he, but he put an idea that resonated for me as I thought about this scripture and why I was drawn to, to his book when thinking about why Jesus says your faith has made you well. And it's the idea that there is a difference between being cured and being healed. There's a difference between being cured and being healed. Being cured, he says, is the absence of a disease. It's you have a wound and it's healed. It's, it's cured. It goes away. It's the absence of a disease. But being healed is much bigger than that. It's much bigger than just being cured. Being healed, he says, is a natural movement towards wholeness. It is, in his words, the movement toward experiencing one's self as a vital whole. Whatever may be happening corporally, which means happening in the body, healing is not an endpoint. It is as much a process as disease is. 
So what he's saying is that oftentimes our illnesses are a symptom of something greater. Somewhere we've divided ourselves, separated ourselves from our full self. He talks about how illness is often a teacher that initiates people into their healing journey. How it requires the acknowledgement of our suffering. Healing requires the acknowledgement of our suffering. Opening ourselves to the truth of our lives, past and present, as plainly and objectively as we can. It requires recovering lost parts of ourselves, Asking ourselves where our wholeness is not fully realized or lived out. What about ourselves have we shut off or locked away? I was thinking about, have you ever heard of the, the, the cancer patients who might have a terminal disease, but at the end of their life they, they seem more healed than, than even us who don't have that, that illness, that disease? Because their illness was a teacher and they found a healing, even though they might not have been cured physically, they found a healing. It was much greater than just a cure. The healing is a process of reuniting ourselves with the inner qualities that still live within us as inherent possibilities and that make life worth living. Healing is a journey towards wholeness, whereas curing is solely eliminating a disease in part of our body. Our spirit or our soul and our body distances itself from one another. And that's when I noticed how much distance was actually in this scripture reading. If you go and you read this scripture and you think of the idea of distance, it's, you're going to see it all over what we just read. To start off, Luke says that these men, keeping their distance, called out to Jesus. They didn't come close to Jesus. They were away from Jesus, and they called out to Jesus to have mercy on them. See, leprosy forces distance in everything. They keep their distance from Jesus because what if they're contagious? They keep their distance because leprosy has made anyone who suffers from this disease and also, anyone who makes contact with anyone suffering from this disease makes them ritually unclean. Therefore, if you have leprosy, you're not allowed to go into the temple. You're not allowed to go into ritual spaces. You're not allowed to, to even touch anyone. And anyone who makes contact with anyone with leprosy then has to go through a ritual cleansing process, which is la laid out in, in Leviticus. So they're distanced from their own health and their own vitality. They're distanced from their own families. They're distanced from any other part of their former lives. They're distanced from community. They're distanced from their faith. I wonder how much distance this disease has created in their lives, which is keeping them from wholeness, because it seems like there's a lot. And see, but after they meet Jesus... After they call from a distance for him to have mercy on them, Jesus does, in fact, cure them. They become free from the disease. But I wonder if Luke is showing us the difference between being cured and being healed. See, I can imagine the elation that these men experienced when they were walking towards the priests and, the, and they realized that, that their chronic illness had been cured, that their disease had been cured. Imagine what that must have felt like for these men. See, but have you ever met someone that had a chronic illness? And once that chronic illness had been relieved, they still didn't seem like they were over it. They still didn't seem like they, they were, were quite the same. They still felt like there was some, something about them that, that, was, that was distant. and They weren't the same. They seem to be cured but not healed. Have you ever experienced that in your life? There still seemed to be a distance about them. But look at what happens here. This man, who coincidentally happens to be a Samaritan, not coincidentally, it's very intentional for Luke. This man who's healed, it turns back to Jesus as a Samaritan. He's identified as a foreigner, which in and of itself carries an element of distance in it, in that title. This man turns and comes back to Jesus, and that distance is dissolved. 
He turns back to Jesus and coming close to him, falls at Jesus' feet, giving thanks for the curing of his disease. So starting from a distance, distant from his health, distant from his vitality, distant from his community, and I would guess distant from his emotional and spiritual life, from a distance it seems Luke is symbolically pointing out his return to wholeness. His return to not only his health, but also his spiritual well-being. This man, on his way, realizes that he's cured. And it's not just a physical curing, but I imagine there's a spiritual curing. Something that allows him to regain his sense of self and his sense of wholeness. And he goes back, and instead of keeping a distance, he falls at Jesus' feet. Comes very close, symbolically dissolving that distance. And maybe that's why Jesus says not only that he's healed, but that his faith has made him well. He's not only cured, but he is well. He's back to wholeness. I wonder. And I wonder what that means for us. What if in this scripture, leprosy is a symbol of anything that is creating distance from wholeness in our lives right now? What if Luke is begging us to ask, how might something be going on in our life that is causing or creating a distance between me and my full self, me and my true self? What if Luke is asking us Begging us to ask what is creating a spiritual illness in me that is separating me from God. And before you think that that's a bad thing, Mate says that oftentimes illness can be a teacher that guides us back into wholeness. That if we take our suffering, our hardship, or whatever it is we're going through seriously, and we deeply investigate the root causes of that, then that investigation will open up a a map and 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 a trail back to wholeness. It will open up elements about ourselves that we might have shoved away or or separated ourselves from or not wanted to admit or maybe we we were ashamed of it or maybe we had just uh, did something to to shut that off. For example, I remember when I was a little kid, I loved to sing and I liked to sing loud and I would sing all over the house. And me and a friend, I think we were in third grade, we were in music class and we were singing loud, singing loud, and somebody made fun of us for doing that. And from that point, I never sang again. Because I was ashamed, I was embarrassed of it. And then when I got into, throughout my, my, it was kind of tough because both my parents were musicians. My mom was the uh, the the uh, choir director at at our church growing up, and and I had a, a. a fine, decent voice that people wanted to ask me to be in choirs. I was like, no, 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 no. I, I shut that part away from me, and I did it. All. I w- took all of my 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 myself towards sports instead, and really shut off the musical part of myself. And it wasn't until seminary, when I was like in my 30s, that I went back to singing in a choir. And it was so much fun and it brought me so much life because that whole side of me I had shut down and shut off. Now I regret that. But I wonder how much of ourselves we've shut off because of something like that. Maybe something that has happened in our, in our younger lives. Maybe something that, that, that we've just kind of forgotten about that keeps us from wholeness. What kind of struggle or hardship or even illness in our life might be creating a distance in us now but could actually be a teacher for us, inviting us to deeply interrogate our lives, creating a pathway to wholeness, creating a pathway back to God? Do we want to be the men who find a a cure but might not be past all that brokenness in their lives? Or do we want to be the man who finds that cure, but also that cure guides him back into spiritual wholeness? 
and gratefulness and praise and thanksgiving. And that path back to wholeness makes him well. I think Luke asks us a series of questions that are very important in our lives. Do we want to live this life from a distance or at Jesus' feet giving thanks? Amen.